Days follow a regular pattern in the Malayan rainforest, with the lapse of time and the seasons hardly making any difference. Daybreak brings the calls and songs of the early birds, accompanied by the screaming, pulsating crescendo of insect music. Soon afterwards, most jungle birds are awake to start their preening, foraging and singing, while the whooping calls of the gibbons and the raucous cry of the hornbills echo over the treetops. Later in the morning, as the sun climbs higher, the jungle gradually returns to silence, only to be broken, perhaps, by the monotonous call of a treetop barbet or the hammer of a woodpecker. After a brief reawakening during the late afternoon, when the heat of the tropical sun has abated, the jungle floats from a very short twilight into the darkness of night, when the night birds and the predators take over again. Both the beginning and the end of each jungle day is announced by the Malaysian eared night jar, when for a five minute spell it emerges from the forest and can be seen hunting for insects high in the air with a clear and melodious tap de bow, which is also its Malay name. Also awake at daybreak are the gibbons, which can be distinguished from monkeys by the complete absence of a tail. To creep up on a small family of these beautiful animals, to watch them feeding on fresh young leaves and shoots as they swing from branch to branch with their long sinewy arms is a thrilling experience. And surely one of the most memorable of all jungle sounds is the melodious morning song of the white-handed gibbon. The loudest of all insects is said to be the male cicada, and no collection of jungle sounds would be complete without the fascinating chorus of these insects, either at dawn or sunset. One by one, they strike up until the very forest vibrates with their music.
Probably the loveliest Malayan songbird, a member of the robin subfamily, is the common sharma. In general, the jungle may be noted more for bird calls than for song, but with his powerful voice sounding out of thick patches of undergrowth, the common sharma certainly rivals some of the best known European songsters, such as the blackbird and the song thrush. Moreover, the male sharma is a strikingly handsome bird with his long tail. Easily recognisable are the flocks of beautifully coloured but noisy long-tailed parakeets as they hurtle through the air or congregate loudly quarrelling on the higher branches of a dead jungle tree. Tiong is his name, and Tiong his most common call, although we also know him as Grackle or Hill Miner. He calls loud and clear in the calm of the morning, but borrowing freely from other jungle birds, some of the probably older hill miners do have an amazing repertoire of notes, whistles, squawks and grunts. They fly conspicuously, usually in pairs at treetop level, their white wing patches looking like windows. There are many species of babblers about, equally distributed in the mountains and lowland forests of Malaya, most of them shy and rather secretive birds, living either on the ground or in the heavy jungle undergrowth, with only a few of them frequenting the branches of trees. A fairly common babbler amongst the bushes and smaller trees of the lowland jungle is the plain babbler a little and sometimes rather noisy bird that has a slow and most eerie early morning whistle. Hearing this call for the first time, someone was suspected of hiding in the bushes, trying to make a rather funny 
and not quite successful effort to fool somebody else. Later in the day, the plain babbler goes over to a more forceful type of song, interspersed with chattering notes. The large racket-tailed drongo, a remarkable bird, not only for the greatly elongated twin tail feathers projecting from his handsome, glossy black body, but also for the amazing range of his voice, which at one time brings us his most common bell-like call, and at others a wide repertoire of clear, melodious song and imitations of other birds. Often he is to be found on a prominent branch by the jungle fringe or near clearings, always ready to swoop on a luckless insect in a short and powerful chase with his long tail feathers whipping wildly. The large, racket-tailed drongo. Malayan barbets, except one, make monotonous, repetitive calls. They also are ventriloquists, which in combination with their predominantly green colour, makes them very hard to spot amidst the green, leafy canopy. The bird that follows is the most commonly found little barbet. During recording, it was seen to call in all directions, as if to emphasise its presence.
A rather obscure inhabitant of the forest floor in low country jungle is the large-footed wren babbler, a seldom heard and hardly ever seen bird with a monotonous and melancholic call. Amongst the strangest looking birds in the world are the half dozen species of hornbills that frequent the Malayan jungle. They are mostly black with some white and about the size of a turkey with a weird horny cask on top of their massive bills. When they fly the beating of their powerful wings can be heard from quite a distance. During the nesting season the male hornbill imprisons the female in a hole in a tree which is plastered up with a kind of cement made of clay and the bird's own droppings. Only a narrow vertical slit a few inches long remains through which the female is fed during the nesting period as well as for some time after the eggs have hatched. As might be expected the raucous call of a large bird like the hornbill carries a long way Listen now to the black hornbill calling from a high perch in deep jungle. Like the babblers, the bulbuls are, with a few exceptions, not easy to identify, but they are much less secretive, and a number of them have melodious and cheerful songs, sometimes leaning towards the forceful side, like that of the white-throated bulbul. The Malay name for the next bird, the black-crested magpie, is Burongambing, which means goat bird, well chosen because of the strong resemblance of one of its calls to the bleating sound of a goat. 
it's hard to believe that this same jay-like bird also makes one of the most beautiful double gong-like sounds, uttered sometimes as often as twelve times in a row. Black-crested magpies are the size of a small crow. They trek through the lower part of the jungle with a noisy wing beat, which can be heard in the recording. The sounds of the jungle are many and full of surprises. All too often one finds himself confused by shrew-like raspy calls uttered by some babbler species, dog-like barks by frogs in the jungle night, the peculiar cat-like mew of the raffles malcoha, or the angry beat of a squirrel, just to mention a few of the mysteries of the rainforest. These are frogs chatting together in their jungle swamp. The plaintive cry of the serpent eagle over the forest, oft repeated as he wheels on high against the sky. Tantalizingly close, yet hard to spot and harder still to identify, are most brush babblers. The red-rumped tree babbler is one of them, trekking through the heavy undergrowth in twos or more, and betraying his presence by his strident morning call. Woodpeckers are not difficult to pick up in the jungle because of their raucous voices and busy tapping. 
The largest Malayan species are the great slaty and the white-bellied black woodpecker, also called the great black woodpecker. The male of the latter, with his crimson crown, resembles the European black woodpecker. Here you can hear his piercing call and frantic drumming, the white-bellied black woodpecker. One cheerful little fellow which lives in bushy lowland jungle, as well as in cultivated country, is the red-headed tailor bird. His name is derived from the remarkable way in which he sews his nest together, consisting of one or more leaves which are formed into a pouch, a really fascinating piece of work. as most other members of his family. Smithies, author of The Birds of Borneo, complains that it is a time-consuming and unrewarding pastime trying to watch or identify jungle babblers in the difficult conditions of a thick tropical forest. I cannot but share his opinion after five years of trying myself. The next member of the self-confident family of lowland bulbuls is the restless and rather noisy scrub bulbul, recognizable by its usually puffed out pure white throat and its crest. This bird is common in heavy jungle.
Belonging to the tree-haunting, hawk-like cuckoo family is the rarely seen migratory Indian cuckoo, whose distinctive and persistent call note can often be heard in deep jungle during the breeding season. Like all true cuckoos, this bird lays its eggs in the nests of other smaller birds, and after hatching, the young cuckoo becomes very soon the sole occupant by throwing all other eggs or the other young birds out of the nest. The Indian cuckoo. Switching over now to the highland jungle, where one of the really unforgettable sounds is the call of the large gibbon, the black siamang, a wonderful animal to watch. His truly thrilling boom carries for miles over the dense forest, across ravines, to reverberate against the distant jungle slopes. A common and very amusing mountain babbler is the chestnut-capped laughing thrush, who often gives himself away by moving furtively but somewhat clumsily through the foliage, whilst communicating with other members of his feeding party by discreet little calls and squeaks. His yellow bill, reddish-orange head and vent, conspicuous white eye ring and white wing bar make him unmistakable. His song is one of the most notable in the hill stations of Malaya. A handsome bird, 
commonly found in pairs in both the lowland and highland jungle is the red-bearded bee-eater, the largest species in Malaya of this family. Usually it is a rather silent bird, but when it calls, the brilliantly coloured feathers of the throat are fluffed out and those of the crown raised. And now, Mula's barbet, a mountain species, very difficult to locate, yet never far away. The last bird, too, is a mountain species, a member again of the true cuckoo subfamily. In spite of the fact that he advertises his presence so clearly, he is very hard to spot, the large hawk cuckoo. His complete call consists of two different parts, one a fascinating and not often heard upward cadence of two identical notes and the other containing two syllables, repeated many times and rising in scale to fever pitch. Both calls may be heard in the following recording of two large hawk cuckoos vying with one another in pitch darkness deep in the highland jungle of Malaya. <laughs> 